going to be showing you a extreme 3D sandworm from Beetlejuice that's on a super long sculpted stiletto. And this nail, among a few others that I've done recently that have been a clear, or at least partially clear stiletto, have really gotten me excited about clear, clear nails and stilettos uh, specifically. Because with this one, the way it's wrapped around the stiletto, it almost looks like it's floating there. Like there isn't a nail in the middle, it's just this sandworm that is wrapped around it. And like I said, kind of a floating effect. I love it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. So we're going to begin by layering two forms together to create an extra long sculpting space. So cut off the extension portion of one form, press it onto the end of the extension area of the second form, making sure to line them up as carefully as you possibly can. Get the form ready, kind of rock it between your fingers, pinch the end, open the back, and fit it to the nail. So when you're fitting it to a practice nail or a practice finger like I am, I find that you really have to shove your practice finger nail tip up really deep into the practice finger. Otherwise the nail tip itself kind of like pops up a little bit. But if you really press that in almost to the point where you feel like you're going to break something, then it doesn't do that and it fits on the form way better. So now I'm going to be blending the nail down to the form with clear acrylic. And then once that is done, just to create a nice smooth, continuous, continuous area from nail to form, it just blends it down, makes your color acrylic apply so much smoother. We're going to do an ombre from green to clear on the natural nail down over the extension. So when you're doing this, just very gently brush out, use slightly wetter acrylic when you're trying to do the fade. And as you can see, it blends out very nicely. And then I'm going to dip a bead of clear acrylic into a glitter and add just a smidge of a green glitter mix over the area that it blended out in, just to add just one more element to it. I love glitter and I couldn't help but adding a little bit of a glitzy element to this nail. So we're going to finish sculpting the stiletto with clear acrylic going down the form. So the very end or the very tip of the nail here is going to just be straight up clear. There's going to be no color, no glitter, nothing in it. And that's part of what makes it look like the sandworm is sort of floating in midair, like it's not holding on to anything. That clear middle of the nail just looks phenomenal. And then continue that clear acrylic all the way up, sculpting and encapsulating the rest of the nail, building in your apex, doing everything else that you need to do. And when you're sculpting a nail of this length, one thing I like to do is I like to kind of evaluate it from all sides. And I know I say this for all sorts of different things is to make sure you're looking at your nails from down the barrel, left side, right side, over the top. Sometimes if you want to go extreme, you can even look at it from the back going forward. So like your finger is towards your eyes and then you're looking down your finger, down the length of your finger and down the length of the nail. You never know what you're going to see, but it might help. Then we're going to carefully remove that form and file this nail into shape with a hand file. One thing I do want to mention is that if you are using a nail form like I was and you make it extra long, it's not an extra long ex nail form. It's one that you have to kind of make extra long by layering forms together you may find that the space that little little line where the two forms are attaching to each other is slightly weaker so if you find that and that's the case for your forms just be very careful when you're filing especially over that area just as an FYI so now on a nail form backing so save those nail form backings that you were just using we're going to sculpt a very long skinny section of white acrylic thicker on one end thinner down towards the other end once it starts to kind of turn matte where you can pick it up slide your brush underneath it as soon as you can as soon as it's at that point and then you're going to wrap it around the nail now mine as you can see did not go all the way down the tip of the nail if yours did call it a day and that's perfect if it didn't grab a little bit more white acrylic sculpt another long skinny piece this time skinnier so that it meets up with the end the tail of the last piece you did and then we'll wrap all the way down the nail so sculpt that little bit out let it sit up again just enough where you can slide your brush underneath it kind of wiggle it up and free connect it to the end of that last piece that you did and then swirl it around the end of the nail so it's so quick and so easy but it is a little bit tedious just because you have to try to get that that moment when the acrylic is the perfect picking up consistency to pick it up and if you wait too long it's not going to bend and turn the way you want it to if you wait not long enough you might have to start over because you might mess up the shape of the acrylic and it might stretch out or break or stick to itself or you know some other nonsense so the really the key with that whole process is making sure you pick it up precisely at the right moment again practice it's something that just sort of becomes natural to you once you do it for enough designs so don't don't be turned off by that little little motion notion there just just keep it in mind and give it a go so now we're going to be taking more white acrylic and we're going to be kind of 
building out the shape of our sandworm. So that first little bit, those first shapes we sculpted are very thin on the nail form backing. They don't have a nice rounded shape. They're kind of pancake-like. So you wanna give them more of that rounded shape. You wanna build it up a little bit more, smooth things out. Some of the places, especially where the bits of the sandworm, if yours was in two pieces like mine was, connect, may need to have a little bit more acrylic to smooth out the transition. You may find that where it turned that one spot, mine was really wrinkly looking. That's fine, just smooth it out with more acrylic. So now we're going to be sculpting his face on a nail form backing with white red and green acrylic so I'm gonna be honest here you guys I have not watched Beetlejuice mainly because I'm a wuss and it just seems like it would scare me <laughs> I don't watch scary movies I love creating things from them but I personally just do not watch them because I probably wouldn't sleep for a month but the sandworm has two faces and I honestly like I said I don't know because I haven't watched the movie is it two faces like is it the sandworm just has like an inner and an outer face or did he swallow somebody I have no idea these are the questions I have that I could not find on the internet the answers to but we're going to do the first little inner face with white acrylic first creating almost like a crab claw type shape adding a little bit of red acrylic in the lips portion of our of our face build out a little bit more white acrylic and then after you have that part of it done, just next to it, you're going to want to sculpt a little tongue. You can wait and do that later, but I'm just going to get that done just at this moment while I'm thinking about it. Sculpt a little skinny tongue with white acrylic. Now to get that outer, because that first red bit is almost like the gums, and now to do the actual lips, you're going to sculpt a long skinny strip of green acrylic. Again, let this cure up just enough where you can kind of pick it up and move it around. You're going to place it on the lips of your sandworm. The reason to do this separately is it'll actually make your green a little bit more bright since there's going to be some air pockets here and there between the green and the red. Otherwise, those really neon colors like the green might just turn out kind of muddy brown against the red but it also gets that really long skinny stripe going without messing around and chasing it around the sandworm's face going back to white acrylic i'm going to be sculpting a bunch of little teeth inside this mouth we're going to just do tooth over tooth going back and forth doing all of them all through the mouth they're so small that it is kind of uh taxing to sculpt them so if you wanted to instead you could probably just forego sculpting them and then paint them in with little white dots later and it would look just fine especially for this interface so once you have all of those little teeth done when you get to that point the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sculpt the outer portion of the face so take white acrylic again and you're going to sculpt essentially a petal shape it's just like if you're doing doing a flower so you're going to make this sort of petal shape a little flatter on one side than the other and then let that set up just enough and then wrap it around the inner face it's so weird and this particular step is extremely awkward and one that doesn't go i don't know it's one of those things where it does work but i feel like there's probably a better method of sculpting the outer face where you want it to actually be 3d and like around it one i could not come up with in the process of making this but even though it does work it just feels a little bit a little bit uncomfortable sort of or awkward like it doesn't quite want to go where i tell it to go but we're going to do it anyhow we're going to sculpt the second part of the face on the nail form backing doing it just so that it's that one's a little bit smaller and actually the first one i did i thought was a little bit big so i went through with a manicure scissors and you'll see that i'll cut it in just a second but before we get to that point you want to just sort of smooth out the transition from the two parts of the face together in the back with a little bit more white acrylic so that it isn't quite so lumpy or fragile it'll just secure it together but now we're going to be sculpting all of the little teeth on the nail form backing and it's a white acrylic against a white nail form backing and you basically can't see it but just sculpt multiple little triangles little teeny tiny triangles for the teeth that are going to be on the outer section of the face and while you're sculpting these little these little triangles make more than you think you'll need because it's very easy to drop them later as you go to attach them with some nail glue <laughs> it's just it's easy to drop them so try to make some extras so that if you do happen to drop them you have backups then glue the head to the nail and then once that head is glued down as you can see i'm just going to trim the face slightly because i thought it got a little bit a little bit too big on the one piece of the jaw and then smooth out smooth out the transition from the head to the neck or the body of the sandworm with more white acrylic there's a lot of white acrylic happening in this video there's a ton of white acrylic involved so just keep adding adding little bits smooth it all out you want it to look like a smooth transition from from body to face where there isn't like a weird lump nothing is 
wrinkly or uneven it just has kind of a nice flow to it so add that little bit more of white acrylic wherever it needs to be whether it's down the whole face just on the neck just a little bit on the head wherever wherever you're looking at it and you just think it needs to be fixed up slightly i'm going to go back through and trim that mouth open a little bit further if that line if you do happen to trim yours like i did if that line isn't perfectly smooth it does get the sandworm does get a lip later so that'll cover it up just try to get it to be about the right shape sculpt the little fin coming off the back almost like a little shark fin and then once you have that shark fin sculpted then you're going to glue in your tongue and teeth so i'm first going to glue the tongue in and then i'm going to grab all of those teeny tiny little teethies that i made and i'm going to glue them into the odor portion of the sandworm's face like I said, this part is really quite tedious and easy to sort of drop stuff and glue the tooth to your tweezers instead of gluing it to the nail or whatever kind of malfunction will go wrong. It could. What I would do, and this is what I did do, is I would put a little bit of nail glue on your nail form backing as like a, just like a little puddle. One drop is, is enough. And then pick up a tooth with a tweezers. Use a pointy tweezers, not a flat sided one. And then dip the, the root of the tooth into the nail glue and then place the tooth. If you try to either brush nail glue onto the tooth or put nail glue onto the sandworm's face and then set the tooth into it you're going to get way too much glue and it's going to glue everything to your tweezers and that's going to be a mess so you want to try to just dip the very minimal amount of glue onto each tooth and this hold might seem like it'd be really weak just because it's a tiny bit of nail glue that you're using and that's fine because we're going to secure everything together with some more white acrylic in a second this nail glue extravaganza is just to get the tooth there long enough that you can put some acrylic on it which is what we're doing now so we're going to and as i was putting acrylic on the one tooth it decided to bend and move a little bit but we're going to secure all of them together with more of that marvelous white acrylic like i said lots of white acrylic involved in this design so we're just going to go down each tooth it doesn't take much a tiny little bit of acrylic just to make sure each tooth is stuck where it's supposed to be stuck and then once you are done with that there is one element that is kind of missing on our sandworm it doesn't have any eyes so i'm going to go in with red acrylic and i'm going to be sculpting our sandworm's eye so the red acrylic i'm using is just a really nice bright one the brighter the acrylic the better for this case you just want it to have you know just a nice nice little eye sculpted and you don't do too much too much detail there you can keep it pretty simple and then like i said our sandworm does have another set of lips on the outer portion of the face so we're going to take our bright green acrylic yet again and we're going to sculpt that other lip this is the same green acrylic by the way that i used for the background of the nail keeping it all nice and matchy matchy pick up that lip place it on mr sandworm's face tuck it in on the back and then do it for the lower lip unlike the first face where i did one one section of lips for like the whole perimeter of the face i'm going to do this one in two sections just so that it is a little easier to control because it's so much longer it needs to be so much longer it would just be a, you know it's a little bit more difficult to get it to move exactly how i want it to and stay where it goes before it cures so i'm going to pick up this next worm or not worm this next section of the lip and set it down cut off the extra that one cured up a little bit more than I wanted it to so it didn't stick as well as it could have so I just secured it with a little bit more of the green acrylic now we get to do the part that I really think is the fun part because right now he looks so so kind of plain and he's got that really intense black and white stripe so we're going to get to paint him now I'm going to first start out with some gray acrylic paint and I'm going to add just a little bit of a shading around him so leaving certain areas nice bright white kind of bringing some gray tones into different areas of the body kind of focusing on the outside edge and making it lighter in the middle even going back through to some white paint and brightening up the middle if it needs it here and there you can kind of keep it um, as simple as you want or go as detailed as you want with the shading i'm going to do some darker green outlines around the lips add some yellow on the inside set of teeth and then some black and white stripes on the outer set of teeth black and white stripes on the tongue and then you're also going to have to add the black and white stripes down the entire worm. The first stripe should encompass the fin, but then after that, you just have to space them nicely so that they they go white, black, white, black, white, black, all the way, all the way down our little wormy friend. You do want um, to add one to the front of the face, those ones should be thinner than the ones that go down the back and so the eye is in a white section and the fin is in a black section so besides those two little facial features otherwise the rest of it is pretty much up to your discretion as to where you place the stripes like i said though try to keep them nicely spaced so it doesn't look 
sporadic. You want to keep them both the same width, about the same spacing all the way down the tail. When you're doing this, I like I said, I'm using acrylic paint. I would recommend using acrylic paint. It doesn't add much depth to the design, so it won't add any thickness or any texture at all. Gel paint sometimes does, sometimes doesn't, depending on the brand. But I find, for the most part, they do have a poofier consistency than acrylic paint does. So that if you're painting something like this and you're giving it stripes, but you don't want any sort of height to the black area, just use acrylic paint to keep it all very level. Once you have all the stripes down all the way to the tip of the tail, you're going to go through and do a little bit of detailing around our sandworm's eye. Just a couple little black and gray lines and a pupil is really all that you need. You don't have to do too much to it. Don't necessarily need to highlight it if you don't want to or do anything else. Once that's done, we get to do the finishing steps, applying a layer of gel sealer over the background, making sure that all of that clear nail gets the top coat so it really looks clear because that will up the clarity significantly. And then after you have all of that done, go up and around the green portion of the nail, just making sure that everything that should be shiny is, and then apply a layer of matte top coat over the 3D art, really making sure to seal in all the acrylic paint that is on the sandworm. And then this one is all done. I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. He looks so cool. If you wanted to take it a step further, if you have a nice bright green that is glow in the dark, that would look amazing in the background too and around the lips. Otherwise, he looks good just as is, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.